So thank you so much for joining us for, for this session. Um, we, and thank you to the organizers for uh, having us present. So according to the most recent report from the UN on, on the stillbirth rate and numbers of stillbirths, what we've seen from 2021 data, which is the most recent report, which was reported last year, um, stillbirth, numbers of stillbirths have uh, dropped to just below 2 million, so 1.9 million babies stillborn. That's at 28 weeks of pregnancy or later. Obviously, different countries have different systems for when they classify a baby's um, death before birth as a stillbirth. But for the international definition, from 28 weeks of pregnancy or later, um, almost 2 million babies were stillborn. So that's, a, that's um, around one stillbirth every 16 seconds, and it translate to a rate of 13.9 stillbirths per thousand total births. And these rates really are understood to be an underestimate as it's, it's quite likely that stillbirths are being undercounted. But if you have a look at the graphs here, the one on the left um, shows stillbirths, the rate, the stillbirths per 1,000 total births. And you can see there is a downward trend, which is, which is a heartening thing. Um, and on the other side, the, the graph with the yellow shows the numbers of stillbirths that they have. Um, they have reduced slightly over the last 20 years. So that's um, encouraging. Although still the numbers themselves remain unacceptably high. Uh, the, the figure 2 million can, can roll off the tongue quite easily, but in, in every instance, that's, that's a mother and a family that um, are very often hugely impacted by this sort of event. What this um, report also reveals is that there's um, huge differences in stillbirth rates across the globe, um, with a risk that's 20 times higher in the country with the highest stillbirth rate compared to the country with the lowest stillbirth rate. So these these um, events are not um, that the burden is not equally shared amongst different countries in the world. In fact, most stillbirths were concentrated in a few countries, with the the greatest number found in India followed by Pakistan, Nigeria, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, and Bangladesh. And, and these six countries accounted for almost half of the estimated global number of stillbirths in just six countries. Um, but they accounted for 36% of the global live births in 2021. So it's not just about population numbers, that the rate is, is very high indeed. And so there are, there are great challenges ahead if we want to reduce these high numbers globally. So this graph here, also from the, um, U, from the UN Group for Child Mortality Estimation, shows what could happen over the next 10 years. And <clears throat> the red line at the top there shows what stillbirth rates will look like between 2021 and 2030 if the numbers of stillbirths look like if the rates remain the same as they are today. So still a very unacceptably high number. The, the yellow line shows what stillbirth numbers might look like leading up to 2030 if the current trends are maintained. So if we continue to maintain that slight decrease that we, um, that we have been seeing. However, the, the blue line shows what things could look like if we were able to reach the um, every newborn action plan targets for 2030. So the, the yellow line really is, is not considerably lower than the red line and it would just be fantastic if we could see a genuine downward trend like that's, that's shown in the blue line. And really, if you just imagine for a moment, if, if every mother and baby were able to experience um, a, a level of care and, and support during pregnancy and birth that they could achieve rates um, equivalent to what is average in a high income country, what, what we would see is that blue line down there, less than half a million stillbirths a year. And um, wouldn't that be amazing? So who or what is 
ISA and what are what are we doing about it? <laughs> so the International Stillbirth Alliance or ISA is a global organization that brings together um, bereaved parents, healthcare workers, and researchers to try to address the huge gaps in stillbirth and early neonatal death through collaboration and research, education and advocacy. And ISA was established, was founded 20 years ago now in uh, 2003. We just had our 20 year anniversary uh, celebration last year um, by three US based mothers of stillborn babies. And these mothers recognized that actually no country in the world was paying sufficient attention to stillbirth um, or providing adequate support for. Um, bereaved parents and families and they saw that it was a problem globally and they intentionally decided to establish ISA as a global organization to address um, stillbirth around the world. So 20 years later ISA is an alliance of over 50 member organizations with individual supporters on every continent and a board also that's very international so this map here with these little location signs just shows where the board members are located so i have to say it's um can be tricky meeting <laughs> Um, but since isa was established um we've been instrumental in um having the lancet stillbirth series um published in 2011 and then a, a follow-up Lancet Stillbirth series in 2016. And, and both of these um, both of these journal special issues highlighted the issue of stillbirth and offered a practical roadmap for <clears throat> eliminating stillbirth by 2030. Um, however, we continue to face enormous barriers to um, realizing these aspirations. So sadly, the, the focus on stillbirth is still missing um, at all levels. And so just to, to illustrate what I mean by that, um, if you uh, note that if, just looking at this these graphs, you'll see that um, one of the key interventions, just to explain what this graph is, one of the key interventions for improving maternal, perinatal and neonatal survival is actually understanding the numbers of deaths and the causes of deaths. And that helps local healthcare systems to prepare and um, and to develop strategies for reducing um, preventable deaths. But what we see within countries with policy for birth and death registration, only around 60% of countries have a system for registering stillbirths. And for those countries that do have system and systems in place for um, maternal and perinatal death and stillbirth registration, um, less than 60% are actually registering stillbirths. So this is, um, this is a huge barrier to actually preventing stillbirths if you don't know how many are occurring and, and what, the, what the contributing factors might be. Another indicator that stillbirths continue to be underprioritized is countries that have a, the small number of countries that have a target or, or an, a goal to reduce stillbirths. So just 31% of countries have uh, a national stillbirth rate target. And um, really, that's only a very small increase from 2016. So the, the graph on the right that's all in red shows that the numbers of countries with um, targets to reduce stillbirth rates have um, not gone up very much at all, um, but from 2016 to 2022. So clearly, there is still a lot of work to do. So the ISA... Um, has come together to try and advance work in stillbirth prevention and to um, promote improvement in care and support for families who experience a stillbirth or, or neonatal death in the following ways. And this is how we work. Essentially, we seek partnerships on every 
con- continent to try and assist to implement our, our, our mission in preventing and ending preventable deaths and ensuring respectful care. And we work through collaboration by bringing clinicians, researchers and parents together globally um, to, to share our um, knowledge, to share high quality data and to um, promote, still promote efforts to reduce stillbirths. And so today on International Day of the Midwives, we'd really like to share some of the work that we've done, what we have done to help advance these goals. And there's some fantastic resources available that are free and easily adaptable to different country settings. And these include the, um, a global um, guide for stillbirth advocacy that this can help um, different countries set up their own stillbirth advocacy. Um, Toolkit, advocacy toolkits for health providers and for parents. And um, the other thing that we've set up is an online registry of, um, global registry of support organisations for parents who have experienced a stillbirth or for those that want to become advocates for stillbirth. So this is what the Global Advocacy and Implementation Guide looks like. It's a lovely document. It's free. It's easy to access. If, if you want to scan the QR code, it will take you to um, the ISA website where you, can, where you can download this. But I will take you through it a little bit. So the purpose of this guide was to bring together, really, existing technical resources and practical guidance and put it all in one place so that um, p policy makers in different countries or, or healthcare um, providers that were setting up programs aimed at reducing stillbirths and improving care for women and families who experienced stillbirth could go to one place and, and find good quality, easy to digest information to help them do that. And the target audience really was twofold. On the one level, we were thinking about national and subnational um, governments, civil registration authorities, health facility directors, and so on. And on another level, we were also ensuring that the material was able to be used by, by parents, parent organisations, community leaders, individual clinicians, midwives, doctors, and so on. So just to take you through a little bit of what these chapters look like, there's, um, there's an excellent background section that really sets out the to um, what the toll of stillbirth is on those who, who experience a stillbirth. Some of the underlying risk factors that are associated with stillbirth, just to increase awareness, particularly for healthcare providers. Um, Chapter two goes through what the challenges are and, and what the opportunities are along the continuum of care to address those challenges and, um, and an excellent section on bereavement care and just outlining in an evidence-based manner what some of the um, important elements are of respectful and supportive care for um, mothers and families who have experienced a stillbirth. And all of these uh, include parent voice, community voice, and clinician voice. The remainder of the guide includes um, introduction to stillbirth advocacy for those who want to take up the advocacy challenge, how you might do that in your local area, and advice on how to implement programs, and also how to um, begin counting stillbirths and measure success. So all of the things that we um, know how to do in high income settings, we've set them out in a very straightforward manner so that people that want to do this in their, in their local setting can, can pick this up and, and go with it. So just to show you what some of the pages look like, it's not um, overly wordy or, or complex. Each of the pages has um, little stories, uh, little quotes from from clinicians, from mothers, um, and just information on what you can do on a practical level, whether it's care related, policy related, and so on. Um, and lots of links to 
where you can get more information. So it's an excellent starting point also for for students who are wanting to know more about um, care around perinatal death. So we would like to thank the funders for this, that gave us the opportunity to put this resource together, um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and also to UNFPA for um, assisting with um, funding support for the design and layout. And also we would like to thank our partners, which includes the International Confederation of Midwives. So just that QR code again, in case you um, haven't had a chance. Um, and I will now hand you over to my lovely colleague, Margaret Murphy, who is going to tell you about the advocacy toolkits and global registry. Thank you very much, um, Billy. And um, just to, I suppose, reiterate, ISA's unique selling point is the connection um, and the relationship between parents and clinicians and researchers. And the adv advocacy toolkits um, were developed with parents um, at the, the core. And the the purpose of the um, the toolkits um, were to reduce stigma and strengthen bereavement care post stillbirth in you know in countries that um, didn't have um, such resources um, available to them. And as Billy has already alluded to, two separate toolkits have been developed. The one on the left you see here. Raising Parents' Voices um, Advocacy Toolkit is the Parents' Voices Toolkit, and that was developed um, in and piloted with bereaved parents in Kenya. And the one on the right was um, specifically for healthcare prof providers, and that was piloted in um, India with um, healthcare providers and with parents. And it, the um, when the toolkits were developed, the aim was that each toolkit can be further adapted for use in other settings. And the toolkits were launched in 2022 at the um, annual ISA conference in Utah. And they were both funded by um, PMNCH and by WHO, um, SEARO, for which we were very grateful at ISA. So the toolkit for parents, the first um, toolkit, um, is um, developed for um, stillbirth parent support organisations. And it was um, aimed to introduce the concept and aims of advocacy related to stillbirth and also to provide guidance um, and to support parents to learn about how to raise their voices to help ensure their views and needs are heard within their country's health um, goal setting agendas. Um, and of course, the best way of doing that was learning from other parents. Um, and um, the parent voice is very, very important. And so um, using um, the, the experience of other parent voices was very important within the development of these toolkits. And this toolkit includes information on stillbirth itself, the causes and the overviews and the risk factors, the impact of stillbirth on parents, advocacy as a tool for change in stillbirth prevention and ways of advocating advocating for change in stillbirth prevention of bereavement care and coping strategies for advocacy related stress. Excuse me. The toolkit for healthcare providers again is about raising awareness and educating women and their families about stillbirth so that we can advocate for increased resources for stillbirth bereavement support and to amplify the voices and the needs um, for um, stillbirth bereavement support and um, to amplify the voices and needs of affected parents with fellow providers related to stillbirth bereavement support. And um, this awareness is, very, is still limited in many settings. 
and communication um, between parents and clinicians is a necessary step in ultimately supporting parents um, to advocate for stillbirth prevention and bereavement support. So the, you know, the next step we would hope would be the implementation phase at the country level, because um, at many, um, many parents would tell uh, um, would tell us that um, the um, the the respectful care um, at the time of loss is still um, a, a challenging issue um, for them. Um, when their babies have died. So delivering news, acknowledging parents' grief, talking with parents about how their baby may have died, um, making room for them to express their need for support, you know, even encouraging them to meet and to hold their babies um, can be challenging um, for many, many parents. Um, discussing a safe plan for future pregnancies um, providing respectful bereavement care um, can be very, very challenging. Um, so um, those kinds of issues need to be developed and they need to be um, culturally appropriate. Not every, um, not every um, culture will have, um, what will have the same, um, will have the same um, cultural needs. And so that's why, um, the, um, the parents' voices are so important in terms of leading the way. Thank you, Billy. The, the third part is that Billy spoke about um, is the Global Registry. And the Global Registry um, is a, um, a very important, again, free um, um, area of stillbirth support that was developed by um, ISA to um, address gaps in respectful bereavement care by identifying organizations or individuals that provide support to parents and families following stillbirth. And to do that, um, the um, ISA developed um, a free resource whereby um, organizations can um, self-nominate um, or um, essentially um, just register themselves so that they can be um, identified on the registry um, as a resource for parents, but also as um, um, a resource for other clinicians. Um, um, it can be, um, again, you can see the link there to the Stillbirth Alliance registry map. Um, because there are um, challenges for um, clinicians um, and they, there are certain parts of the world that are poorly um, supported in terms of um, um, stillbirth support. So, um, it, and that was very clear when, when people started to um, self-nominate onto the, the stillbirth registry. Um, you can see that um, even from the, the screenshot there of the map, there were certain areas of the, um, of the globe that were well supported and certain areas of the globe that were poorly supported. Um, so we're still encouraging people to, um, to um, uh, you know, to come and join the, the free global registry. So if you're, if you're interested in your part of the world, I would encourage you to... Um, to join, you know, to come onto the ISA website to um, to join the ISA registry. It doesn't it doesn't cost any. Um, there's no cost, and um, you you know you may identify other like minded um, individuals. Um, you may end up um, um, identifying people of support in in your area. So. Um, once the registry was up and running, um, the uh, uh, we, as part of ISA, we decided we would do a um, an online and snowball search of support that was provided by um, those um, ser those um, individuals and and groups that had registered with the registry, 
And we did an online survey and in-depth interviews with a subset of providers to really understand um, the challenges that they face and how these could be overcome. And what we found was the main findings and you know, these may not be a surprise to midwives working, um, you know, in, in the area were things like stigma. Stigma was still identified as a real challenge across all regions of the world. Um, the funding gap um, was frequently report, reported. Um, factors affecting the reach of support. So these were things like language, transport, referral systems. Um, a lack of awareness um, of stillbirth at policy level. So that meant more training and education for healthcare workers, you know, was needed. And challenges with workforce, you know, midwives and um, obstetricians were often overworked or overburdened. And, you know, particularly um, peer support and supervision and training was needed on how to deal with grief and loss and bereavement. And there was a poor lack of ag advocacy, particularly um, partnership and advocacy training. And of course, this is where the, um, the toolkits would really be um, beneficial. Um, so it, potential solutions are um, available. Um, and investments in these solutions are, are now available to address the barriers and reduce inequalities across the, across the globe. So what did the Global Registry also um, tell us? Well, what, what, there were many supporters identified, 621 support providers across 75 countries, 510 organisations, 111 point persons, but big gaps in high burden settings. So in the six countries that um, Billy identified with the highest stillbirth burden, we found only eight support providers, six in India, two in Nigeria, none in China, Ethiopia, Pakistan, or in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So we we need to get the, the word out there, I suppose. Perhaps there are um, perhaps there are support organisations out there um, because, um, but maybe just the word isn't, isn't getting out there. Um, the registry is live now on the ISA website and it allows anyone in the world to identify the nearest stillbirth support organisation um, or stillbirth support point person in countries where there, there are no listed organisations. Um, so if you are a representative of such an organisation, we hope that you will join the registry. There's no fee at all for joining and access to the registry is free for all. Um, unsurprisingly, the largest number of support organisations was identified um, in the USA and across Europe. But we hope to we hope to change that. Um, the registry is an interactive map. Um, it's still undergoing tweaking and improvements, but it's available. Um, so if you are um, a support organisation and not part of the registry, please do contact us um, at registry at stillbirthalliance.org. Um, and all information is on um, our website at stillbirthalliance.org. Um, you can find out about all of these products and about everything else we do. And do consider joining us as a member as well. Um, there's free membership for um, people who are, you know, living in countries where um, funding may, may be an issue. Um, so we look forward to many of you um, joining our alliance. And we just want to thank uh, VIDM for having us here today. Thank you very much.